Hello, I'm David Hunt and welcome to The Art Hunter. My artist today, where do I begin? It's the hardest person yet to describe what they do. So, so bear with me as I go through this list and I think I might hit on what this person does. I'm not sure if I do or not. He's an artist, well otherwise he wouldn't be on The Art Hunter. Uh, a stylist of the dark arts, um, that's his, his words. Painter, oh, interesting story there, how the painting came about, or the recent painting. Photographer, curator, designer, story installator, not art installator, story installator. This is the thing that you're gonna really be blown away with. Uh, and there's a Victorian twist about everything this, um, this person does. I'm talking about Andrew Delaney. Hello, Andrew. David, how are you? Very well, thank you. Good. Did I hit on some of the things that you do? <laughs> I think you overshot the mark, but thank you. <laughs> right, well, my pleasure. Oh, and I forgot that you collect stuff. That I do and that I'm very good at. The, yeah, there's, uh, because on your social medias, there's often a lot of stuff. Where did this, this concept design um, the brain come from? Where, where were your, your beginnings? Um, <laughs> that's a big question. It comes from all over the place. Um, 10 years in re working in retail. What do you um, mean in retail? Uh, doing store windows and styling fashion. Oh, um, you're a window dresser. Window dresser, putting rooms together, right, putting okay. nooks together, putting tables together, right down to that fine detail. Okay, now what are they called these days? They're not called window dressers anymore, are they? Um, what are they called? Oh, oh, they've got a really, really merchandise or, or yeah, something. Yeah, that's the drab. Yeah. Right. Okay. And that's, that's the reason I left is because it did go full merchandise. Okay. So. And because they were, you know, like those, you know, like you're down Burke Street Mall, those windows w used to be spectacular, weren't they? You mm -hmm. know, works of art. Well, the Maya windows at Christmas is, is another story, but yep. they really were a true works of art, weren't they? And, uh, and you looked at the, uh, those people that came up with the designs, uh, that they were true artists. Mm, they got you in. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, and did you love doing that? Was it stuff that really I did because it, it, it I was literally working in ladies' fashion and men's fashion and working with kids and toys and uh, so nowadays it, someone can throw a car at me and I can still do it. It's not it's so broad and that store uh, was massive. So there was such a big team. There was forty five people. Uh, Whoa! Working that team at, at full tilt. Yeah. Um, and you got to work through most of those departments. And one of those departments that I worked in was dress fabrics for a couple of years. Uh, and that was literally draping a mannequin and coming up with a, a costume and, and all the rest of it without cutting fabric and all yeah. sorts of things. So yeah. that was one of the, the tricks that I took away from that that I still use now. Right. Then you moved into uh, putting on big displays for the Spring Racing Carnival and and a big events like that, uh, which was still in the same sort of world, wasn't it? It was the event world. Um, I sort of worked up the ladder a little bit, was studied in warehouse, and it was all painting and all that sort of stuff, techniques and things, and then became art director of an, of an events firm that started from, from ground zero. So we got to design puppets and anything that we really wanted to do. Uh, so there was costuming and stuff in, in that. Uh, so we built up quite a good team of people that would um, do some rather large events that were put on Crown um, and Flemington and, and all over the place. So mm. that was a big experience. So where did this idea for, which I'm calling now, a story installations come from? Obviously it was there because of what you were doing in the, the window yep. displays and, and you know, like Crown or wherever. But where did it come from that you wanted to turn it into an art form for yourself? I think I'm just a, a frustrated um, set dresser. For, I should have been doing film. I should be doing film and television. So it comes from getting someone to read uh, a situation. And people do it with windows. They kind of look at the glamorous woman, look at her handbag, look at her shoes, and they read her. Yep. Um, so to do it character-wise, um, you might be watching a film and she might be a cat woman and she's got hand-knitted doilies and a cat t-shirt there's certain things that that people associate with with something yep. um, and you don't have to say anything and you don't have to write anything and they just get it yep. so it's kind of set dressing um, with an art twist to it right 
But you've taken it to another level, as I said, story uh, installations. Um, like Abraham Lincoln, there's, um, and you've done, it a, a, you've done it a couple of times. Mm. This is, well, it's a, a history lesson, but your made up history lesson. Mm. Uh, but here you are, you're Australian, Australian doing something that's yeah, American mm. and very entrenched in American history. Mm. Where did the idea come from to, to take that journey? I wanted to do a war and I wanted to have it all be about loss um, and the other side of war rather than the heroes and the, that side of it and, and just about people. Um, I didn't want to do an Australian one because people know what the uniforms look like and they know... Uh, and it's still very close to home. So I didn't certainly want to t stand on people's toes as far as that was concerned. So I did have to tread carefully. Um, the American elections were about to happen four years ago. So it was my way of, of having a making a political statement about America at that time, yep. which was still at loggerheads and still dealing with racism and still dealing with a lot of those issues that are 150 years old. Yeah. Um, so I got to do it within the confines of that historical um, context and I got to work in Gone with the Wind and Uncle Tom's Cabin and all those sorts of things that I kind of watched and read and diffused those and pull those apart a bit and, and sort of give that American idealised dream of it uh, a, a, a fair nudge. And what, what you did, you know, like, and over my shoulder is a tattered American flag and it's modelled on wh whose flag? It's modelled on a very early flag um, with the circular stars, um, Mary Ross, I think. Yep. Um, and so it's it's based on uh, history, um, and then I've just put it together with all these fairly opulent uh, fabrics and velvets, but they're obviously in this whole state of disarray, yep. and that was basically what was what's going on down in the south at, at that time. So it kind of reflects that. Yeah. But you even to the extent that you handmade. A lot of the, you know, the bodies that would be laying, uh, you know, like in particular sections of it and whatever, you know, like so much time and effort that you put into it. Mm. <laughs> there are. Um, I like to sort of say things in different ways with different objects. I mean, there's nothing more boring than seeing something behind glass on a wall done 20 times over. I mean, this way you get people to react to a 3D object or a, you know, a large piece of textile or a painting or a... So I have all those weapons in my arsenal so I can, I can direct different um, dialogues into different pieces and, and hopefully tell a whole story. A lot of that stuff was connected um, from one piece to another. There was a map of the states which gave you the situation of where you were. Um, there were bodies, there were burnt out dolls houses which gave you a sense of destruction all the rest of it. So there's all these cues that I work through um, within that, with doing different things that will hopefully tell a story by the, the time you get to the end of it. Mm. And I believe that, um, and you staged it, well one of the times you staged it, was down the Geelong uh, region, mm. uh, and a lot of Americans came to see it, <laughs> and they, they thought it was wonderful. Mm. They did. They obviously took the patriotism and, um, and the workmanship involved, uh, and, and sort of grab that aspect of it. And that aspect is there, yep. um, but there's also these darker the dark things, side. undercurrents that are there if you want to look closer. So, yeah, <laughs> that's my American audience. And, and how do you react to um, knowing that, you know, like do, do you, you must you know, stand there and w watching people go through the exhibition and you hear, hear the, the Americans going, oh, you know, this part of history, oh, look at that and look mm. at that. And, you know, like, and you must be standing there with a you know, smirk thinking, they're, they're not really getting what I'm doing here. They're getting it uh, from their perspective and a lot of my stuff is so open to how you perceive things. So if someone sees a corseted figure of a woman and they're romanticise the whole thing and think, oh, isn't it wonderful? I missed gone with the wind. Oh, gone with the wind. Yep. I missed the South and da-da-da-da. And a feminist might come and say, well, that was atrocious, how they used to bind women in and da-da-da. And a kid might come in and say, oh, she's got her underpants. Um, <laughs> so you, you get different um, different readings of, of things that you do. Yeah. Um, and I incorporate those as safeguards in a lot of ways. So there's always workmanship and, and detail in them. So you can sort of, sort of say, well, isn't it? well done at, at the very least yeah. hopefully so yeah yeah uh but 
how how does it go with an Australian audience? You know, like what what's the reaction like to to me when I go? I'm I'm not really interested in mm. uh, the American Civil War. Um, you know, like I know enough about it because so many movies are, mm. are made. About, I've never seen uh, you know like a, a, lot, a lot of the Gone with the Wind. I've never seen it through the whole whole um, movie. Yeah, believe wow. it or not, be, because I'm not interested. You mm. know, like it just it never really appealed to me. But why, why would I go and see that exhibition? Uh, because it's still about war. It's still about loss. Um, and it's still about people, it's about internal struggles and it's about political power and, and all the rest of it and trying to control the South and, and the, the cotton fields and all the, all the things down there. So it's still a really interesting story, even though it is from an American point of view. Um, and I was never that interested either. I mean, I'd seen okay. Gone with the Wind and all the rest of it, but it was the fact that I wanted to show grief and I wanted to show loss. Um, with some of the pieces that I was doing, so it actually fitted with what I wanted to do. Yeah. Now let's um, before we move on to the next exhibition, which is one that absolutely fascinates me. I want to talk to you about your obsession with Victorian era and the collection <laughs> of it. You know, because often you use yourself as uh, a model in your, you know, like social media posts. Mm. Uh, and there you are sitting um, uh, in a smoking jacket and a cravat <laughs> and, you know, and, and with all, all this beautiful set, uh, setting behind you that you've created. I'm guessing it's what your, um, you know, like your home is like mm. anyway. What, what, what is it about that era? Is it the show busy sort of feel? And, and, and it was such a, a, an elegant, beautiful time, wasn't it? Well, it's the dark side of that that I love. Mm, okay. And it wasn't so much an elegant time. The, you know, there were diseases Tough, and yes. slums and brothels yeah. and, you know, all sorts of things. And that's, that's what I find really interesting is those two things coexisting at the same time. Yep. Um, and that's, that's my, that dark gothic um, thing is what I love. Yep. Uh, and so to be able to work within that historical context and say things about contemporary um, Australia and stuff within that is, is kind of what I like doing. Right, okay. So it's all sleight of hand, but it's all, it's all cool. And the, but the other side I find really interesting is that you say you're a very private person and you don't really like to sell yourself uh, with, um, like even getting you to do this interview when, oh <laughs> God, I don't really want to do it. Uh, but here you are exposing yourself because you, it's not you. Is that the answer there? I can do that, yeah. I, I put on that character and, and um, to an extent. Uh, and the people that know me know what a dickhead I am. <laughs> Um, well, I wasn't going to say it, but I've got a list of all the people. I have a very strange, dickhead. dark sense of humour, um, and I don't think you've sort of seen it yet. Um, and a lot of that humour comes through with what I do with things. There's always kind of hidden jokes and, and things like that. And a lot of people that know me know that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a persona that I put on um, to a degree, but you know, I have to do it because I am fairly private. Right. And shy. And shy. Mm. <laughs> Uh, and a country boy. A country boy. A country boy. Now, let's talk about the one. Again, one of the, the features is over my shoulder, uh, the, the human body, mm. uh, and, but we're looking inside. The, the outer layer is not there. Mm. This blows my mind. You are so clever. You made that. I did. It's full size. There's a head and legs and, and things, and it's a little bit over life size, but... It was one of 33 pieces that was done for a travelling um, body exhibition. Um, and we had a, like a baby that was chopped in half and um, all sorts of you know, head slices and, front and arms and all the rest of it. Um, and I did it fairly anonymously, expecting people to kind of go, oh, but I was quite su surprised by the reactions to it. A lot of people were really moved by a lot of the pieces. Uh, and people brought um, or bought uh, about two thirds of the pieces opening night. Excellent. Um, and there were cancer cells and all sorts of things. So people were buying things for very personal reasons, which oh. I hadn't factored in. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, and there's one one piece. Um, well, well let, let's talk about the the, the full length body. Mm. Um, it's not total to you know like the what's what's going on there it's it's mm, roughly it's very roughly i did have a fabulous big 
Grey's Anatomy that I was working out of, and that was a game changer for me. Yeah. Um, with the leg cut throughs and, and things like that, the, they were fairly close. Yep. Um, the hearts have always been fairly interpretive, mm. um, and so they're whatever. But um, it was all s- kind of what you'd expect to see, or, or it was fairly stylized, but um, at the same time, the colours of the blankets, it was all woolen blankets, were just incredible, and I didn't mm. have to dye anything. Right, okay. There was one woolen blanket there, the terracotta one I've had since I was um, a teenager. Right. Uh, and it went through several of the pieces, um, and it's a real off-meat colour. It's absolutely fantastic. Wow. So um, that brought a real to it. Yeah, and there, there's also one photo I've, I've seen on um, social media where you're looking inside the skull. Uh, there's bandages, but then you've sliced it open. You see, yeah, that's a full figure, and and also a puppet. It does move. Oh, um, you can actually kneel in front of it, and because it's hands like that, you can actually make it move. Um, and that was unnerving for a few people. Um, but yeah, there was a, a whole there was a straitjacket again, and all sorts of things that alluded to mental health, and um, and that was that was one of the, it was in the corner. Uh, of the exhibition just by itself. Wow. Yeah. And But your detail with your needle point, and there's e- even one that you have actually got on a loom, I think they're called a loom, are they? The yeah. way, uh, and you're, you've done it the needle point. Why? Uh, did you know that or did you just teach yourself how to uh, do it? I knew what I wanted to do and I knew what, what I wanted to look like. Um, so I went and did it. Without <laughs> any help no, from anyone no because I, I kind of it's um it's sleight of hand even though there's a lot of there's no glue there's a lot of stitching involved um but it's working out what product what uh, is going to work best for you and, and you know that was chenille wool i think is the one you're talking about the and that was the first piece of the exhibition so it was two cells about and being attacked by um all these wriggly things um and it was all hand stitched onto tulle so right. um it was only about that big. Yep. Um, but that's where the exhibition started, and then it went from babies all the way all the way through. But right. Okay. Yeah. So it's whatever, and that's what I find exciting. Whatever technique I need to do, or and I won't say master because I'm certainly not a master of it. Um, but I will wrangle in all sorts of millinery techniques and um, fly fishing lures, all sorts of stuff. Right. Moving on to Charles Darwin, a, you know, like a very famous figure in history, and and you, know, you either believe him or you don't. Mm. You know, like there's two two schools, I, I believe. Uh, again, it's that Victorian era that rears its head with what you do, and and um, and and you know, like the travelling your travelling show about the the human body mm. is very Victorian as well, mm. isn't it? And and how did you take on the the Charles Darwin? What what was it that you were looking for? To, um, to exhibit there? Uh, well, the backstory was it was several of his um, specimen cases that got lost down in Tasmania when he was coming all the way through. He used to always send cases back before him. So these were several of the cases that didn't quite make it back. They, they didn't make back, or in your mind, they didn't make they it They didn't back. make back. And they a few people sort of thought, oh, but they didn't make back. <laughs> um, so I got to work on some specimens and... Um, and some sailcloth and so anything nautical I kind of factored in. So my stitching became sailor-like right. in a way. Um, and lots of shells. And, lots of and shells and lots of things that were made and, and everything from starfish to... Did you make them? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I thought they were real, you know, like washed of, up on There's a couple the... of real ones. Right, okay. But, um, but yeah, the more... Like I could have just, I could have done more. I could have done insects, and I could have done all sorts of stuff. But it, the theme for that exhibition was sort of birds across the the whole thing. So I kind of factored it into birds, and so there were mummified birds and all sorts of stuff that were all handmade out of clay and fabric. And um, how long did it, you know, like the, an exhibition like that one? I think was one of your more simpler ones. But well, now I'm hearing that you've made all the <laughs> birds and the and the shells and whatever. How long do you spend before you exhibit? 12 months. Okay. Um, and I normally have a few pieces up my sleeve that have sort of started that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so therefore you're planning ahead on wh- wh- the space you're going to 
exhibiting, mm. uh, hopefully, mm. and and you're like, and, and the the whole concept, or do you develop it as it goes along, or do you know exactly what you want to do? I was lucky with the big ones that I knew what the space was like. It was yep. a, a theatre space like this, yep. um, with truss rigs, and, and so I knew ceiling heights, and I knew the text really, really well. I knew that they were capable, more than capable, of backlighting stuff and uplighting stuff, and. Um, so all that technical side of it was was probably about fifty percent of what it looked like. Yeah. Um, so those boys in Colac are very very clever, um, and I relied on that. And that's part of you know is relying on other people as well to 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 pull that off. It, yeah. it can't just be you. So technically, you do need people for sound, and yeah. there was sounds that went through it. Yeah. And it was a whole thing. Uh, I, I'm staggered that you're not held in such high esteem in, in, in uh, museums around the world with what you're doing because it's so uniquely different. There, I don't know anyone else that's really doing what you're doing. Uh, are you aware of anyone? Not really, but it is such a mishmash of where I've been. And I mean, everybody has a different curve to, to what they pick up. And yes, you can go to college and learn ABC. Um, but the way that I've sort of picked up stuff and, and pulled stuff together is, is my own way. So maybe mm. that's, that's probably why. Mm. I love there's just one, one um, shot on Instagram and, and you've got um, a, a, a dummy and you've just thrown a, a sheet over the top of it and you've got written ghost underneath. I think that's hysterical. <laughs> I, I just love it. I, I think just that was for it. Halloween. Yeah, I oh, oh, was it. <laughs> that, that symbol, and, but funny, yeah, like really funny. Now, we're, we're seeing them over at both our shoulders. Uh, in lockdown, you thought you'd start to paint, mm. uh, which you haven't done very much before, but who did you paint? What do you mean? <laughs> Would it be self-portraits? It was self-portraits. I'd always painted since high school and I'd always done, um, I'd done some portrait works of, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark and all that sort of stuff because film plays quite a big part in, in in my backstory, um, but had never done it. I'd never done a, a, a self-portrait. So in January last year, for an exhibition on body dysmorphia, I thought, "Oh my god, I'm going to have to do something personal with this one because I can't just wing it." Um, so I did a self-portrait for that on a on a large jigsaw and sort of pulled parts of it um, apart. And I was kind of like, "Oh, okay, that that wasn't too painful." Um, was it hard looking at yourself, considering you say you're fairly shy and you don't like being centre of attention? No, there's a... I've told, oh, believe me, folks, he does love to be centre of attention. <laughs> what he switch, does is There's a switch off thing yeah, yeah, when go you... Yeah, on, whatever. No, there's on, a switch off going. thing where you look at it and you kind of... Mentally, you kind of do a paint by numbers uh, for colour and all the rest of it and you kind of break it down. So once you start to break down an image, it's, it's less about you. And then you're sort of painting it and you're doing it and all the rest of it. And then halfway through that process, you actually stand back and you kind of go, oh, okay, that, that actually, I always start with the eyes because if you don't get the eyes right, it's never going to happen. Um, and halfway through that process, you kind of go, okay, that's, that's someone. So there's that, that shift in when it comes less about materials and less about technique and it becomes a person. It becomes some aspect of a person. And could you 100% tell that it was you? Well, you could, but what about, did you actually invite other people in to say, have I got it right? You know, no, because like, I didn't care. You didn't care? No. <laughs> okay. No, it was about, um, and half of the portraits have, have got gas masks or veils or whatever, so there was only really maybe five. Um, That's a lot still. That were me. There's one that I really like. Um, that I think captured um, a fair bit, and I think that's that one. Um, and the other ones were kind of like, uh, I'd caught aspects of myself, and there's, but the, that one was probably the clincher. And I was hoping to have a really good one out of the 15, um, but I was surprised that I'd, I'd quite like a few of them. Yeah, well, I was blown away when I was seeing them go Thank up on, on social media, really, really impressed. But there's also one as you as a child. I wasn't aware that it was you as a child. Mm. I just saw a child and I thought, oh, okay, you know, like there's a, a you know, I wasn't sure where you were going there, but mm. now I know that it was you as a child. Mm. Why did you paint yourself as a child? Oh, that's the whole inner child thing, I think, that everybody tries to hold on to and to encourage and, you know, maintain. Um, and I still do have that inner child. Um, but it was also about losing my mother and also about the family home. Um, 
and so it was also about that. But basically, it was it was another aspect of me that I uh, uh, think is really important. So yeah, that's that's the inner child. And what what about family? Have they seen it? Can they see the likeness, or haven't you shown it to them? I haven't really shown it to them. Oh, Andrew, get over yourself. <laughs> You're bloody good. You're bloody good. Now. Um, Dorian Gray, we've got to just okay. uh, uh, move there. And this is just one painting, is that right? Or is it? Yeah, which is salt. Um, but it's that whole Victorian thing with glamour and all the rest of it. But of course, we know the, the other side of it. So that painting, in a lot of ways, actually embodies what I, um, how I work. So, because yeah. what, what happens to that, that painting? Uh, different stories, different things. But in the end, he's faced with it. Um, and it gets destroyed. It gets destroyed or burnt or something. Yeah, and no. But in your painting, you know, like the eye is. Oh, the eye. Well, it's basically him in front of the canvas and the eyes poking through. And then when you look at the back of it, it's all pulled together and stitched together and distressed and string and and rope and all the rest of it. So it's kind of a wow a piece. Yeah. And then um, evolution, a, a chess game. <laughs> you have been doing your research. <laughs> so what's what's going on with this this chessboard? And there's the the normal queens and and kings and knights and no, um, they're all religious figures. Oh, are they on mm. the other end? I didn't look that closely. But what's on the other end? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. What's that all about? Well, it's about creation. Right. It's about one side or the other. Okay. So yeah, so it's actually it does relate to the Darwin exhibition, but I it was would, a piece that was done later. Yep, yep. And I would probably incorporate that next time I do that right. exhibition. Okay. But yeah, I had this collection of, of religious figures from way to go, pretty much, um, and then all the dinosaurs sort of came in bits and pieces, and it was basically this table presented itself a really beautiful old knockdown gambling table. Um, so yeah, it, it's. Like it's kind of one plus two equals three with me. So yeah. once that third piece presents itself, um, yep. I'm away. Okay. Yeah. You as a curator, um, and it's down where you live, um, down sort of Geelongish way. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that come about? And and you you must love doing uh, you know like uh, you know helping other people because you're. You know, like that—that that is your what what you do, isn't it? it it's part of it's for, part of what I do, but I, it, it's a lot of it. I don't second guess that sort of thing. It's kind of like, well, here's an object. What's the best way to present it? Uh, and that comes back to VM days. It's it's and a lot of people are kind of in the art world are sort of oh, it's all about this and it's all about that. It's like, well, I'm not really interested at that stage about what it's about. It's yep. about the best way to show it. So it's going on a plinth and it's being spotlit um, and it's sitting beside that one because that might relate so I'm very practical when it comes to things like that um, and but your knowledge from and, and it was, would be that training from when you were a window dresser because mm. uh, you have to sell a piece mm. and that and that's where a lot of artists um, lose out they don't understand mm. how how you know they've got to sell it at, you know to a, a person that's walking into a room don't yeah they? I, I don't believe in showing up to a white roomed gallery white walled gallery oh okay with an exhibition and them just going Go for it. It's it's kind of like well, you know, I want to do a, a recce. I want to lighting is really really important. Yeah. Um, especially with with my stuff. Yeah. Um, so I like to to tick all those boxes before I even walk into a space. Yeah. Yeah. And what's what's next? Have you got an idea? Especially considering that it takes you a year or more to put on an, an exhibition. Uh, have or have you got too many ideas running through your head? Is I know the next three exhibitions. Three, yeah. Oh, only three. Only so you three. know what you're doing for the next three. So years. they're coming together. Um, the one I'm working on at the moment is Frankenstein. Oh, so well, that's an obvious one for you. Yeah. I so it's a combination of, of all is the that, medical. Is that about you? Are you using your self portraits in that? Uh, I'm no, but it you. is about creator and um, and that sort of playing God and all that sort of stuff. Yep. So once again, it's science, religion. Yep. It's a lot of the anatomy stuff um, oh, okay. redone. Yeah. Um, and a lot of specimens and that sort of thing. Um, a lot of costumes. It's a travelling um, costume show. So there's a lot of costumes from a proposed or supposed um, theatre production uh -huh. that was banned way back when yep. because it was 
against God. Right. Um, so that's the backstory for that. Yeah. And when you say traveling, uh, do you know where you want to go yet? Or if it, it'll probably happen in Colac again. Right. To begin um, with, and then hopefully, do you invite? people from you know, like institutions around the country to come to see your exhibitions for it to then show up somewhere else? Not really. Oh, it's yeah, very Andrew. It's very arts and crafts orientated. Yeah. Um, so there's a, there's a huge following down there because of all the wool and all that sort of thing. Yeah. But not necessarily the right. other side. Okay, next one. What, what's after Dracula? <laughs> or don't you want to say? No. You, you're keeping them to yourself. Mm. Andrew Delaney, there's so much more that we could have spoken uh, to you about because your mind, it's just wonderful. You, I, I, I love it. The minute I started to see your art on social media, that's how we met, wasn't mm. it? And, uh, and I've just been intrigued in your sarcasm when we, we, <laughs> we chat on, on, uh, on social media. Uh, you are a true artist and thank you for talking to me today. Thank you. My pleasure, David. And you've been watching The Art Hunter and I'm David Hunt and we'll see you again real soon.